Hey everyone, uh, let's go over all of the NeoDent instrumentation here and a couple of extra burrs that I've added into the mix. So this big kit here, this is the GM's full surgical kit. On the other side right here, this is NeoDent's compact surgical kit. Now the difference is if you're taking even like the three fives and both sides, you're gonna see that the bottom of this, of the one right here, so when you're, com when you're comparing even the 3.5 burr from the j full surgical kit and then the 3.5 burr from this kit, the Grand Morse Compact Kit, um, this one actually has a drill stop on it, so it has a little ledge, uh, which is really cool because it's going to work with this NeoDent Control Stop Drill Kit. So let me put these birds back. Um, and how the NeoDent Control Stop um, Kit works is uh, you have one burr and you can actually go and pick up a guide sleeve. And the guide sleeves are breaked up on sizes. So you have eight millimeter drill stop, 10 drill millimeter drill stop, 11.5, and a 13. So as far as when I'm doing surgery, I like to uh, think as little as possible, right? And when you're drilling at high speeds, up and down, one thing that you would like to eliminate in the beginning would be worrying about the depth of your implant placement. Uh, I'd be worried, I would like to more be concerned about the angulation of your osteotomy uh, and not so much about the depth of it. So when we're working, you basically just stick this burr in here and you hear like a little click and then you drag it to the side and this way and you pick it up. And you can see that now it has the 13 millimeter uh, stopper on this one specifically. So I'll put this one back. This is a super helpful tool to use. Um, we use it every day. For the most part, when I'm doing my drilling on a, on a daily basis, I'll use a pilot burr with a drill stop. Uh, I like it, uh, especially when we're doing full arch of implants, because you're going to take your uh, pilot burr and you can just, for the most part, most of my implants are, you know, 13s or they're usually a common size. So you're just going to go in and zip, 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 and it's a little bit faster than having to concentrate looking at the burr. So when we're looking at the NeoDense full kit here, this top line, this is for the Titamax implant. Uh, Titamax implant is really a cortical implant, made more for really, really dense bone. It's a straight implant. So kit also can be used to do uh, a neodent drive implant and a neodent helix implant. So literally everything. So I do encourage everyone to have two different kits, uh, the full kit and the compact kit, uh, just so you have an entire selection of pieces to use. Uh, but for the most part, you know, everyday implant placement, more than 95% of the time we are using uh, NeoDense Helix implant. That's, that's pretty much a universal implant to use. Uh, what's what cool about NeoDent in general is just the selection of sizes of implants. So let's say you are impinging upon a nerve area in the posterior and you really need to get a little bit shorter of an implant. Titamax actually has a seven millimeter implant, which is fantastic. Um, and I know later down the road, within the next year or very soon, uh, they're actually going to be coming out with a six millimeter implant. So some pretty cool stuff to come. Now, when we're going through here, so remember, this is for Titamax. This is usually an implant that you're not gonna typically place. Same thing with this row. This row is for, these are a little, I'd like, I'd like to call them cortical uh, burrs because it's meant to just open up the top of an osteotomy uh, and really, really dense bone, like, D1 or D2 bone. Uh, and to be honest, I don't actually use these either. So well, the ones that we actually use are this row right here. This is the main row. This is your go-to burrs. Uh, when we're going down the sequence, this sharp pointy one, this is your lance. It's pretty sharp point to it. I like it because it helps you get uh, more well-defined osteotomy started. Then the diameter of this one is actually 2.0. Then we go to this one, you can see this one has more of a blunted tip on it. Uh, so when we're starting our osteotomies, uh, one thing to keep in mind is uh, preventing from bouncing around. So the reason why I like this one is you can much easier sneak this into the small hole and not bounce around than this one. This one's a little bit uh, more of a flat apex. So with these burrs, we have a 3.5, 3.75, a 4.0, a 4.3, a 5.0, and even a 6.0, so pretty much all the sizes. Now the row above it, these are the plus size burrs. Uh, the plus size burrs mean that it changes the width of the osteotomy. 
So when you drill a hole with these, this line of the regular burrs, it undersizes it by one millimeter. And if you have very, very dense bone, you can upsize the burr and you can actually add another 0.3 millimeters to your osteotomy in really, really dense bones such as D1 or D2 bone. So for the majority of the time, you're gonna be using this row. If you have D1 bone or D2, sometimes that's when you can increase the size of the osteotomy by that additional 0.3 uh, by going towards the plus size burr. So in a lot of our kits, um, we actually don't even have these burrs in it because we don't really use them that often. Um, so uh, that's why we really pretty much exclusively use these two burrs. So uh, part of implant placement is actually just keeping things simple. Now there's two burrs here that I have. These are my additional burrs. I like to call these my precision burrs. Now these precision burrs are uh, meant to start your osteotomies. Now when you, even when you're looking at these two, and you can see that this two millimeter one looks a lot bigger than this 1.5 millimeter one. So the first step in all of my osteotomies is actually using this one. This one is just way sharper. You could literally poke my finger there. Uh, this one even feels blunt compared to that one. Uh, so this one's 1.5 millimeters and this one is two, mil two millimeters. So in starting your osteotomy, especially in the beginning, it's all about uh, being very, very precise in terms of where we're putting your osteotomy. So when, uh, you know, when we're looking at the following videos, it'll start to make a little bit of sense of why we're using a smaller, sharper burr in the beginning, because you have more room to change your angulation, more room to change the width of it, all, pretty much everything together. The other burr that I like to use sometimes, it would be a Lindemann burr. Now, when you're looking at these two precision burrs, you see this one right here, the silver looking one, the 1.5 millimeter one. I actually get this one from Blue Sky Bio. Uh, and if you're on DSN, you actually still get 10% off, which is great. Um, and then the one out here, a Lindemann burr. You can see all these serrations on the side of it. Those are side cutting. So the reason I use that one is if you need to change your osteotomy angulation um, or direction, it's way easier to take a side cutting burr and move your osteotomy to the side while it's inside the osteotomy uh, than it is to use a burr without a side cutting. So, you know, in the beginning when we're placing implants, especially for your first 100 implants, I think it's very important to use burrs like this that make your life a little bit easier. Uh, later down the road, when you start placing out know, two, three, 400 implants, you're gonna stop, stop using this burr altogether for the most part, I'd say. So let's go through the rest of this kit. We have um, little drill stop or not drill stops, uh, little like little ones that put inside the bone, so you can really just you know gauge the depth of how far deep you are, or you can put these in to take an X-ray to see where you are in terms of the direction. I actually don't use these very often. Uh, I would prefer to use uh, the best way to see an X-ray in your angulation is actually to use the burr that you just prepped it with. So I like taking X-rays with my actual burrs and not really with these as much. These are a helpful tool sometimes, uh, but I do encourage you to use the burr. We do have this little angulation. This is for depth. I'd say when you're looking at the bottom of this one, you can see this very, very bottom uh, black portion. That is 0.8 millimeters. And then the top of the black is 1.5. And then the bottom of this next black mark right here is 2.5, then it goes 3.5. This is just a depth gauge. This can help you identify how tall of a healing abutment that you wanna place. So another cool tool, there's quite a few measurements on that little small thing there. And then we have two different implant carriers, right? Uh, a short and a tall. Sometimes in the posterior, you're gonna be using the short, right? And these just go on the torque wrench. So this torque wrench is pretty nice. Uh, tip when you're sterilizing it, uh, just always take it apart because these are mechanical pieces and when it's not being used, we do recommend you taking this piece out and keeping it separate uh, right underneath the kit. So keeping it in there and sterilizing it separate because if you do keep it attached the entire time, you can wear out some of the pieces in the inside and your stability or your torque measurements won't be as accurate. Uh, on the end of it, you have a direction that goes towards you, right, which means in and then away from you means out. So these just go right into the torque wrench itself, which is pretty easy. Now, when you're using, when you're putting an implant in, 
you're going to be using this. This is the implant pickup piece. I'm going to show you kind of real quickly about you know, how it looks to pick up the implant when we're doing it. So this is a new dent helix implant. I'm just going to unbox it real quick so you can see what it is. It comes in a, a little case like this. All you do is you just twist off the top of this like that. And then what we'll do is you attach your implant pickup piece to your hand piece. And I'm going to take it, usually when you pick it up, I'm going to just do it from here to snapping it in, but I want to show you what it actually looks like from the inside. You can see the inside of this carrier is actually pretty nice. You can squeeze it, it actually moves. So if you're worried about it falling out of the case, you can squeeze it a little bit. So when you're going to pick it up, these actually just snap in, which is cool. It snaps. And you can pick it up, you can move it around, it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, after, I'd say, probably every 50 implants, that piece wears out. Uh, for the pickup, so don't make sure you ask for a new one. Uh, the best thing about Neodent 2 is they are really great about replacing burrs at no charge. So definitely have a backup of this one. In terms of other backups, make sure you always have a backup. Torque wrench is super important. Um, also, I would recommend having backups of the implant pickups themselves. These two specifically are a good one. And then I always have a backup of my main burrs, like my 2.0, like the sharp one, this 2.0, and then my 3.5. So just having extra stuff is really, really always helpful. I'm just going to put it back. So let's say if you had to take an implant out, you can actually just put it back in uh, this carrier itself. You just like pinch it, move it back and forth, put it back in here, and you can actually fill this whole bottle with saline so that everything stays nice and, um, and moist there. So the last piece of these kits are new dense prosthetic kit there's a separate prosthetic kit which is nice you don't have to you know if you're just seating your crown you can take this little kit out rather than bring your big kit out and having to re-sterilize all those burrs or you know risk of getting them dull over time so the prosthetic kit has several things inside of it too torque wrench screwdrivers they have this attachment right here that will go into here these ones uh, there's also three sizes of them uh, so, so pretty cool. There's literally every selection of tool that you need here. Um, and then traditional screwdriver too that will go into this specific piece. So that about wraps up new dense kits.